Hello and welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Oh, please stop, stop. There's, there's no need to cheer. Just push the like button. Um, good morning. This morning we have 7,920 homes on the market. That's uh, a higher Monday than we've seen for a while. I'll share the numbers with you in a couple seconds. I've got some great um, antidote about the weekend. And with you fellow realtors, I want you to hang in here with me and tell me if you're having the same observations that that I'm having, especially over the weekend that I had. And then I got some huge eye buyer news, and then we're going to cruise through the numbers. So um, first of all, let me talk about the weekend. Uh, buyers right now, they, for some reason, don't want real estate agents to know what they think about the house when you're looking at the house. Now, I had a couple of few months ago that would ride in their car, wouldn't ride with me, which is okay. I've noticed that's very common. And, but when we look at the house, they would go in another room and they whisper to each other. I, was thinking, Guys, I, mean, you know, I had no idea. Do you like the house? Don't like the house? At one point, uh, they walked out and goes, yeah, we'd like to write an offer. I didn't have a clue what they liked or didn't like about the house. Now, when I go in, I kind of point out some things, you know, uh, you know, this is, this looks cool. Uh, this is kind of odd. Um, but for some reason, buyers have this fear that if the realtor thinks they really like the house, that something bad's going to happen. And uh, Betty, yes, I did see that, and I'm going to talk about that. She's asking me, did you see the Wall Street Journal article regarding Zillow? Yeah, I got uh, two articles I want to share about that. Um, but then um, I'm in one this week, and I'm in the car, and they're riding in the car with me. And we go into a house, and we look at it, and we come back out. It's the first house, and the husband, great guy, says, well, let's talk about what we liked and didn't like about the house. And the wife in the back seat said, alone. And I thought, why don't you want me to know what you think of the house? That makes my job so much harder. I'm trying to get a feel for the style that you want, um, things that you like and you don't like. Why do you have to be so tight-lipped about it? It's funny, I was a little, I was a little uptight about that uh, over the weekend, so um, just ranting. But the other thing I noticed is with the inventory being so tight, it's so rough out there um, in... I'm going to tell you what happened with this condo that we wrote an offer on and how bizarre that ended up being. We were up in the North Phoenix, Northwest area looking at condos and we come out of one of them and there's this uh, nice couple with their agent waiting to get in, you know, waiting for us to finish. And we say hello and we leave and then we go to the next one. There they are again. So, you know, there's because there's only so many places to look at, you're bumping into all these agents and their clients. In Chandler, same thing. I come pulling up to a house, there's an agent already in there with their clients and they walk out and we wave, say hi, and then it's our turn and we go. We drive a mile and a half, same couple, same agent. I look at them, I go, are you, are you following us or are we following you? And they laugh and giggle and their agent just glares at me. Evidently having a sense of humor with his client is bad protocol. So I went ahead and didn't do that. Let me tell you about the, the what's happening. So here's a condo. It's 190,000. Nothing spectacular about it. It's fixed up nice on the inside. The showing traffic was very, very light. When I made the appointment, according to the showing time, I was the only one. So we wrote an offer, found out another offer came in that was higher than ours. So uh, the agent agreed that she would send us a counter that would meet their terms and uh, away we go. And so we're ready to go on this thing. The seller is 84 years old and was taking a nap. So all we're doing is we're waiting for the seller to okay and sign this counter offer and the, the contract is ours. Well, before she woke up, in came a buyer that offered $235,000 on a $190,000 price with appraisal contingency and no inspections. I, how do you compete with that? When I was lining up homes to view in Chandler and I was going and trying to make appointments on Saturday to show on Sunday, three of the homes sent back and said, I already have three offers, um, so we're, we're canceling showings. It's because, like I said, there's very few homes, so we're running into the same agents looking at the same houses that we are, and it is tough out there. And here's how tough it is. 3,911 homes came up for sale over the week past seven days with 3,646 going under contract. You can see it here, went up slightly. Um, and then uh, two, that's a difference of 265 units with 1,706 
price reductions. That number is kind of hanging in the 1600, 1700 range. Not seeing, um, as expected, you know, a huge increase in listings. Uh, Betta says we keep getting rejected because we do our research and offer reasonable prices. I don't even know what a reasonable price is anymore, Betta. Um, you know, we thought this condo would probably go close to its asking price, uh, but there's no way that we're going to offer them $35,000 over their asking price. I personally don't think it's going to appraise more than one. 85 and it was 190 so sometimes you just have to walk away and sometimes you get really tired of just walking away it gets kind of rough out there so the big news of the day wait till you see this so zillow to stop purchasing u.s homes after building a big backlog and facing staff shortages zillow has stopped because they can't keep up with it this big digital company has a manpower problem you know they're having the same problems as everybody else they they can't find enough inspectors to inspect the house they can't find enough repair people to go in and put in the new carpet and paint they bought they had this big buying frenzy in august and september and now they're like uh-oh we don't have enough humans wall street journal comes out and says that uh Zillow gets outplayed at its own game. In other words, they're saying they're very successful at the digital world of real estate. Uh, but they, uh, the company that prided itself on technology to outsource a lot of humans, work is suddenly refer referring to the work back to humans. Their automatic flipping business has stopped pursuing new home acquisitions temporarily. So Zillow has found out that they have too many homes. They have a backlog. They're selling some below what they bought them for, and they need to get it down to a more manageable level. Not seeing that problem with Open Door that actually has more homes on the books than Zillow. They're in 44 states, and we're not seeing it with OfferPad. For some reason, those two companies were much better at figuring out how much resources they needed to be able to turn these homes. Zillow has not. So they're giving these listings to their uh, preferred agents, preferred Zillow agents to, to go ahead and move. They're not stopping the acquisition business. They own, right now, I think in Phoenix, they own 660 homes. Um, that's probably a lot for them. I can't imagine trying to get a lot of inspectors and carpet people and painters out to over 600 homes, but they tried to do it and they're falling short. So now the home stays on the books a little bit longer than they want. So uh, it's not really going to affect our industry because they're pulling out. But uh, I thought that was very interesting. Um, they're not canceling contracts. They're just, whoa, we've overextended. We got to slow down and figure this out. Now we have Goldman's, not Goldman Sachs. Who is this? Bloomberg says here, no, Goldman, Goldman Sachs, home prices will grow a further 16% by the end of next year. Remember the core logic forecast that I had that I showed you for next year? They said 2.6. Well, Goldman doesn't agree. They say 16%. Who knows? United States house prices, here's where we're at, of the top 10 metro areas, uh, we've got three of them. Surprise at 36%, Peoria 28, Glendale 28. It's all happening on the west side right now so it's going crazy foreclosures last week we touched on this a little bit we were seeing headlines that said foreclosures are up 67 percent okay well let's look at that see these little dots down here september we had 199 trustees uh, notice of trustee sales the month before that we had 147 so if you take 109 times 67 percent still a very tiny number but it's a huge percentage it makes great news gets everybody panicked that somehow we're going to end up over here but it's a really tiny number big percentages on tiny numbers don't mean anything now finally i thought i'd show you this realtors like to get creative in the tight market you want to get creative when it comes to listing the house and showing the house and then uh, getting attention i guarantee you i'm not going to do this and you are going to thank me. Here it is right here. Realtor stars in shocking NSFW full frontal nude photos to promote an LA listing. Huh. <laughs> Lately, agents are getting more creative in an attempt to promote their listings. One particular agent may have taken it a bit too far when he orchestrated a full-on naked photo shoot of himself in one of his 
inside of one of Los Angeles' homes for sale. You have my word, and I'm never going to do that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But only in California, right? Hey, everybody, take on the day and have a great week. I will see you here tomorrow. Oh, 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 o